What was Thomas Cavendish's claim to fame? English navigator Thomas Cavendish, c. 1560 to 1592, followed in Sir Francis Drake's 1540 or 1543 to 1596 footsteps. Seeing Drake return from his exploits at sea and against the Spanish, Cavendish was inspired. And it was for good reason. Drake had earned himself fame, wealth, and the honor of being knighted. So in 1586 Cavendish set out with three ships for Brazil, made it through the Strait of Magellan, and then proceeded to capture Spanish treasure including their prized ship, the Santa Ana. The kings of Spain later mourned the loss and the fact that the ship had been taken by an English. Youth, with 40 or 50 companions. Cavendish, now in the Pacific, continued his voyage, which took him to the Philippines. Moluccas, and Java before he rounded the Cape of Good Hope, Africa, and returned home. The journey had taken two years and 50 days, cost him two of his own ships and made him the third person to circumnavigate the globe. But his welcome in England was not what he expected. Cavendish was received with acclaim, but was not knighted by the Queen. The fame and fortune that had come his way quickly vanished. He spent most of his new money, and his renown soon faded. By 1590 Cavendish thought he would try the journey again. Setting sail with five ships in August 1591, the fleet was headed for trouble. Having made it to South America. Heavy storms separated the ships as they attempted to make their way through the Strait of Magellan. The ship Cavendish captain turned back toward Brazil attempting to make landfall. But Cavendish himself never made it. He died en route, believing he had been deserted by his mates. What was Thomas Cavendish's claim to fame? English navigator Thomas Cavendish, c. 1560-1592, followed in Sir Francis Drake's 1540 or 1543-1596, footsteps. Seeing Drake return from his exploits at sea and against the Spanish, Cavendish was inspired. And it was for good reason, Drake had earned himself fame, wealth, and the honor of being knighted. So in 1586 Cavendish set out with three ships for Brazil, made it through the Strait of Magellan, and then proceeded to capture Spanish treasure including their prized ship, the Santa Ana. The kings of Spain later mourned the loss and the fact that the ship had been taken by an English. Youth, with 40 or 50 companions. Cavendish, now in the Pacific, continued his voyage, which took him to the Philippines. Moluccas, and Java before he rounded the Cape of Good Hope, Africa, and returned home. The journey had taken two years and 50 days, cost him two of his own ships and made him the third person to circumnavigate the globe. But his welcome in England was not what he expected. Cavendish was received with acclaim, 
but was not knighted by the queen. The fame and fortune that had come his way quickly vanished. He spent most of his new money, and his renown soon faded. By 1590 Cavendish thought he would try the journey again. Setting sail with five ships in August 1591, the fleet was headed for trouble. Having made it to South America. Heavy storms separated the ships as they attempted to make their way through the Strait of Magellan. The ship Cavendish captain turned back toward Brazil, attempting to make landfall. But Cavendish himself never made it. He died en route, believing he had been deserted by his mates. Who was Hawaii LOA? He was a Polynesian chief who sailed some 2,400 miles of open water from the Marquesas Islands near Tahiti, to discover the Hawaiian Islands in the A. D. 400s. The islands were first discovered by Europeans in 1778 when British navigator Captain James Cook 1728-1779, landed on the island of Kauai and named the islands after John Montague, c. 1718-1792, who was the fourth Earl of Sandwich and first Lord of the Admiralty. Captain Cook died there at the hand of the natives in a skirmish over a stolen boat. Who was Hawaii LOA? He was a Polynesian chief who sailed some 2,400 miles of open water from the Marquesas Islands near Tahiti, to discover the Hawaiian Islands in the A. D. 400s. The islands were first discovered by Europeans in 1778 when British navigator Captain James Cook 1728 to 1779 landed on the island of Kauai and named the islands after John Montague, c. 1718 to 1792, who was the fourth Earl of Sandwich and first Lord of the Admiralty. Captain Cook died there at the hand of the natives in a skirmish over a stolen boat. What were Captain Cook's discoveries? British navigator Captain James Cook, 1728-1779, was one of the world's greatest explorers. Commanding three voyages to the Pacific Ocean and sailing around the world twice. From 1768 to 1771, aboard the ship Endeavour, Cook conducted an expedition to the South Pacific, where he landed in Tahiti, and made the first European discovery of the coasts of New Zealand, Australia, and New Guinea, which he also charted. In 1772 Cook set out to find the great southern continent that was believed to exist. He spent three years on this voyage, which edged along the ice fields of Antarctica. On his last voyage, which he undertook in 1776 on a mission to find a passage around North America from the Pacific, Cook charted the Pacific coast of North America as far north as the Bering Strait. 
he met his death in 1778 on the Hawaiian Islands. Cook's voyages led to the establishment of Pacific Ocean colonies by several European nations. What were Captain Cook's discoveries? British navigator Captain James Cook, 1728-1779, was one of the world's greatest explorers. Commanding three voyages to the Pacific Ocean and sailing around the world twice. From 1768 to 1771, aboard the ship Endeavour, Cook conducted an expedition to the South Pacific. Where he landed in Tahiti, and made the first European discovery of the coasts of New Zealand, Australia, and New Guinea, which he also charted. In 1772 Cook set out to find the great southern continent that was believed to exist. He spent three years on this voyage, which edged along the ice fields of Antarctica. On his last voyage, which he undertook in 1776 on a mission to find a passage around North America from the Pacific. Cook charted the Pacific coast of North America as far north as the Bering Strait. He met his death in 1778 on the Hawaiian Islands. Cook's voyages led to the establishment of Pacific Ocean colonies by several European nations. Who was the first European to traverse the Bering Strait? The Bering Strait, which connects the Arctic Ocean and The Bering Sea is 53 miles across at its most narrow point. The first European to traverse it was Danish navigator Vitus Bering, 1681 to 1741 in 1728 the explorer for whom the strait and the sea were named had been employed by tsar peter the great 1672 to 1725 of russia to determine whether asia and north america are connected Who was the first European to traverse the Bering Strait? The Bering Strait, which connects the Arctic Ocean and The Bering Sea is 53 miles across at its most narrow point. The first European to traverse it was Danish navigator Vitus Bering, 1681 to 1741 in 1728 the explorer for whom the strait and the sea were named had been employed by tsar peter the great 1672 to 1725 of russia to determine whether asia and north america are connected What were the Spanish holdings in the New World? New Spain comprised much of the Spanish possessions in the New World during the colonial period. At its height, New Spain included what are today the southwestern United States. All of Mexico, Central America to the Isthmus of Panama, Florida, much of the West Indies. Islands in the Caribbean, as well as the Philippines in the Pacific Ocean. 
the Viceroyalty, province governed by a representative of the monarch, was governed from the capital at Mexico City beginning in 1535. In 1821 a Mexican rebellion ended Spanish rule there, and the colonial empire of New Spain was dissolved. By 1898 Spain had relinquished all its possessions in North America. Its last holdings were the islands of Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines, which were ceded to the United States after Spain lost the Spanish-American War, 1898. During the colonial period, Spain also claimed other territories. In the New World in Northern and Western South America. Most of these holdings fell under the Viceroyalty of Peru, which was administered separately from the Viceroyalty of New Spain. These possessions were also lost by Spain by the end of the 1800s. What were the Spanish holdings in the New World? New Spain comprised much of the Spanish possessions in the New World during the colonial period. At its height, New Spain included what are today the southwestern United States. All of Mexico, Central America to the Isthmus of Panama, Florida, much of the West Indies. Islands in the Caribbean, as well as the Philippines in the Pacific Ocean. The Viceroyalty, province governed by a representative of the monarch, was governed from the capital at Mexico City beginning in 1535. In 1821 a Mexican rebellion ended Spanish rule there, and the colonial empire of New Spain was dissolved. By 1898 Spain had relinquished all its possessions in North America. Its last holdings were the islands of Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines which were ceded to the United States after Spain lost the Spanish-American War, 1898. During the colonial period, Spain also claimed other territories. In the New World in Northern and Western South America. Most of these holdings fell under the Viceroyalty of Peru which was administered separately from the Viceroyalty of New Spain. These possessions were also lost by Spain by the end of the 1800s. What were the French holdings in the New World? The French possessions in North America, called New France, consisted of the colonies of Canada, Acadia, and Louisiana. The first land claims were made in 1534 by French explorer Jacques Cartier. 1491-1557, as he sailed the St. Lawrence River in eastern Canada. In 1604 Sierre de Mons, Pierre Duguay, C1568-C1630, C. established a settlement at Acadia. In present-day Nova Scotia, Canada, and French claims later extended the region to include what are today the province of New Brunswick and the eastern part of the state of Maine. After founding Quebec in 1608, Explorer Samuel de Champlain, c. 1567-1635, penetrated the interior, 
present-day Ontario, as far as Georgian Bay on Lake Huron. Extending French land claims westward. In 1672 French-Canadian explorer Louis Joliet. 1645 to 1700, and French missionary Jacques Marquette, 1637 to 1675. Became the first Europeans to discover the upper part of the Mississippi River. Ten years later, French explorer Sieur de La Salle, 1643 to 1687, followed the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. Claiming the river valley for France and naming it Louisiana. While the French expanded their North American claims, the majority of French settlers lived in Canada. France lost Canada to Great Britain in the Seven Years' War, 1756 to 63. Louisiana changed hands numerous times before it was finally sold to the United States in. 1803 As part of the Louisiana Purchase, it was France's last claim on the North American mainland. French culture and influence in these areas remains prevalent today. In 1635 the French also claimed the West Indies islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe. And its small surrounding islands, including Saint Barthélemy. In 1946 the French government changed the status of these islands from colonies to overseas departments. What were the French holdings in the New World? The French possessions in North America, called New France, consisted of the colonies of Canada, Acadia, and Louisiana. The first land claims were made in 1534 by French explorer Jacques Cartier. 1491 to 1557, as he sailed the St. Lawrence River in eastern Canada. In 1604, Sieur de Mons, Pierre Dugois, C1568 C1630, established a settlement at Acadia. In present day Nova Scotia, Canada, and French claims later extended the region to include what are today the province of New Brunswick and the eastern part of the state of Maine. After founding Quebec in 1608, Explorer Samuel de Champlain, c. 1567-1635, penetrated the interior, present-day Ontario, as far as Georgian Bay on Lake Huron. Extending French land claims westward. In 1672 French-Canadian explorer Louis Joliet. 1645-1700, and French missionary Jacques Marquette, 1637-1675. Became the first Europeans to discover the upper part of the Mississippi River. Ten years later, French explorer Sieur de La Salle, 1643-1687, followed the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. Claiming the river valley for France and naming it Louisiana. While the French expanded their North American claims, the majority of French settlers lived in Canada. France lost Canada to Great Britain in the Seven Years' War, 1756-63. Louisiana changed hands numerous times before it was finally sold to the United States in 1803 as part of the Louisiana Purchase, it was France's last claim on the North American mainland. 
French culture and influence in these areas remains prevalent today. In 1635 the French also claimed the West Indies islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe. And its small surrounding islands, including Saint Barthélemy. In 1946 the French government changed the status of these islands from colonies to overseas departments. What was the lost colony? It was the second English colony established in America, set up in 1587 on Roanoke Island. Off the coast of North Carolina, by 1590 it had disappeared without a trace. Theories surround the disappearance, though it is not known for sure what happened. Roanoke Island had also been the site of the first English colony. Set up in 1585 by about 100 men who were sent there by Sir Walter Raleigh, 1554-1618. Raleigh had perceived the island to be a good spot for English warships. That were then fighting the Spanish, to be repaired and loaded with new supplies. But the plan was not a success, the land wasn't fertile enough to support. Both the colonists and the Indians living nearby. And ships could not get close enough to the island since the surrounding sea proved too shallow. The colonists returned to England the following year. Meantime, Raleigh had dispatched another group of colonists from England. They arrived at Roanoke days after the original settlers left. Seeing that the site had been abandoned, all but 15 of the colonists opted to return to England. In spring 1587 Raleigh sent yet another group of colonists to America. But these ships were headed for areas near Chesapeake Bay, farther north, in present-day Virginia. Reaching the outer banks in July, the ship's commander refused to take the colonists to their destination and instead left them at Roanoke Island. The colonists' leader, John White, who had also been among the first settlers at Roanoke, returned to England for supplies in August 1587. However, the ongoing war between England and Spain prevented him from returning to the colony until three years later. Arriving back at Roanoke in August 1590, expecting to be met by family members and the 100 or so settlers, including some women and children. Instead he discovered that the colony was abandoned. The only clue that White found was the word Crotoan, which had been engraved on a tree. The Crotoan, or Hatteras, were friendly Indians who lived on an island south of Roanoke Island. White set out to see if the colonists had joined the Hatteras Indians. But weather prevented the search and his expedition returned to England instead. Two theories explain what might have become of the lost colonists. Since the shore of Chesapeake Bay was their original destination, the colonists might have moved there but encountering resistance, perished at the hands of the Indians. Other evidence suggests that the colonists became integrated with several Indian tribes living in North Carolina. Either way, they were never seen again by Europeans.
What was the lost colony? It was the second English colony established in America, set up in 1587 on Roanoke Island. Off the coast of North Carolina, by 1590 it had disappeared without a trace. Theories surround the disappearance, though it is not known for sure what happened. Roanoke Island had also been the site of the first English colony. Set up in 1585 by about 100 men who were sent there by Sir Walter Raleigh, 1554-1618. Raleigh had perceived the island to be a good spot for English warships that were then fighting the Spanish, to be repaired and loaded with new supplies. But the plan was not a success, the land wasn't fertile enough to support. Both the colonists and the Indians living nearby and ships could not get close enough to the island since the surrounding sea proved too shallow. The colonists returned to England the following year. Meantime, Raleigh had dispatched another group of colonists from England. They arrived at Roanoke days after the original settlers left. Seeing that the site had been abandoned, all but 15 of the colonists opted to return to England. In spring 1587 Raleigh sent yet another group of colonists to America. But these ships were headed for areas near Chesapeake Bay, farther north, in present-day Virginia. Reaching the outer banks in July, the ship's commander refused to take the colonists to their destination and instead left them at Roanoke Island. The colonists' leader, John White, who had also been among the first settlers at Roanoke, returned to England for supplies in August 1587. However, the ongoing war between England and Spain prevented him from returning to the colony until three years later. Arriving back at Roanoke in August 1590, expecting to be met by family members and the 100 or so settlers, including some women and children. Instead he discovered that the colony was abandoned. The only clue that White found was the word Crotoan, which had been engraved on a tree. The Crotoan or Hatteras, were friendly Indians who lived on an island south of Roanoke Island. White set out to see if the colonists had joined the Hatteras Indians. But weather prevented the search and his expedition returned to England instead. Two theories explain what might have become of the lost colonists. Since the shore of Chesapeake Bay was their original destination, the colonists might have moved there but encountering resistance, perished at the hands of the Indians. Other evidence suggests that the colonists became integrated with several Indian tribes living in North Carolina. Either way, they were never seen again by Europeans. Who was the first woman to circumnavigate the globe? It was a young French woman named Jean Barrett. In 1766 Louis Antoine de Bougainville, 1729-1811, a French naval officer, 
undertook an around-the-world expedition, which was successful and returned to France in 1769. But the crew made an interesting discovery en route. When the French arrived in Tahiti The Tahitians immediately noticed something the crew had not that one of the servants on the expedition was a woman. Jean Barrett had been hired in France by one of the ship's officers. Khmer Khan, who also served as botanist for the expedition. Khmer Khan did not know Barrett was a woman. Her secret discovered by the Tahitians, she confessed. Revealing that she was an orphan who had first disguised herself as a boy to get employment as a valet. When she learned about Bougainville's expedition, she decided to continue the disguise in order to carry out an adventure that would have been impossible for a woman in that day. She was the first woman known to have circled the globe. When did Marco Polo travel to the Far East? Marco Polo, 1254-1324, was only in his teens when he left Venice in about 1270 with his father. Niccolo, and his uncle Mafio, traveling an overland route to the east. The Polo brothers had made such a trip once before in 1260 they had traveled as far as Beijing, China. But upon their return home, they learned that Niccolo's wife, Marco Polo's mother, had died. So when the pair of adventurers set out again, they took the young Marco Polo with them. The Polos traveled from Acre, Israel, to Shavaz, Turkey, then through Mosul and Baghdad, in Iraq, to Ormuz a bustling trade center on the Persian Gulf, where they intended to take a ship for the east. Seeing the ships, the travelers determined they weren't reliable transport, so they opted to continue on land. Heading north to Khorasan, in Iran, through Afghanistan, and to the Pamirs, a high plateau range in Central Asia. It took the Polos 40 days to transverse the high altitude range. Finally reaching the garden city of Kashgar, China. From there, the Polos followed a path skirting the Taklamakan Desert and then rested before crossing the Goba Desert. Which they did in 30 days time, covering some 300 miles. Stopping in Tunwang, the center of Buddhism in China, the European travelers then followed a southeast path that would have paralleled the Great Wall, constructed in the 3rd century BC. After following the Yellow, Huanghe, River, the Polos were met by emissaries of Kublai Khan, 1215-1294. They continued with their guides on a 40-day trip to Xanadu, Shangtu, China, 300 miles north of Beijing. Where they were received by Kublai Khan himself, founder and ruler of the Mongol dynasty and grandson of Genghis Khan. See 1162-1227. It was May 1275. Kublai Khan who was an ardent Buddhist and a patron of the arts. Took a liking to the young Marco Polo, who entered into diplomatic service for the ruler. In that capacity Marco Polo traveled to India and visited the kingdom of Kampa. What is now Vietnam, Thailand, the Malay Peninsula, Sumatra, Sri Lanka and India. 
the Polos, European courtiers who were well liked by the Great Khan. Stayed in China until 1292, finally returning home by way of Sumatra, India and Persia, present-day Iran. In 1295 they arrived back in Venice, which they found at war with longtime rival Genoa. The Polos carried with them many riches, including ivory, jade, jewels, porcelain, and silk. Marco Polo was now a man in his forties and had spent most of his life thus far in the Far East. How is someone sainted? Criteria for sainthood, also called canonization, are leading a holy life, conducting miracles, and suffering or even dying because of one's faith, martyrdom. The Catholic Church keeps a list of saints, from which certain names were dropped in 1969 since their inclusion could not be justified by history. What is karma? Karma is a belief shared by several Asian religions including Buddhism and Hinduism. The basic concept is that the position one holds in this life is a result of one's actions and conduct in previous lives or incarnations. Therefore, actions and thoughts in this life can influence one's future destiny. The goal of many Eastern religions is to be freed from the cycle of karma by following certain religious practices. The word originates from the Sanskrit karma, meaning work or fate. What were Captain Cook's discoveries? British navigator Captain James Cook, 1728-1779, was one of the world's greatest explorers. Commanding three voyages to the Pacific Ocean and sailing around the world twice. From 1768 to 1771, aboard the ship Endeavour, Cook conducted an expedition to the South Pacific, where he landed in Tahiti, and made the first European discovery of the coasts of New Zealand, Australia, and New Guinea, which he also charted. In 1772 Cook set out to find the great southern continent that was believed to exist. He spent three years on this voyage, which edged along the ice fields of Antarctica. On his last voyage, which he undertook in 1776 on a mission to find a passage around North America from the Pacific, Cook charted the Pacific coast of North America as far north as the Bering Strait. He met his death in 1778 on the Hawaiian Islands. Cook's voyages led to the establishment of Pacific Ocean colonies by several European nations. How did Mother Teresa begin her life's work? Born Agnes Gonka Bohakio in August 1910 in Skopje, in present-day Macedonia. 
The woman the world knew as Mother Teresa had by age 12 realized that she would spend her life aiding the poor. At age 18 she left her family to pursue that mission. Joining a community of Irish nuns who were missionaries in Calcutta, India. There she took the name Sister Teresa and began teaching at St. Mary's High School, which she would continue to do for the next 17 years. She took her final vows as a nun in 1937. In 1946 she became ill and was believed to have contracted tuberculosis. Sent to Darjeeling in northeast India to recover, she was on a train when she heard the call to give up all and follow him to the slums to serve him among the poorest of the poor. In 1948 Pope Pius XII, 1876-1958, allowed Sister Teresa to leave her order and pursue this mission. In 1950, after receiving some medical training, she founded the Order of Missionaries of Charity in Calcutta. Two years later she opened a home for the dying poor, it was called Nirmal Hrida Your Pure Heart. One year after that she opened her first orphanage. It was the children there who called her Mother Teresa, or sometimes simply Mother. She spent her life helping the sick and the outcast, who she described as Christ in distressing disguise. Small in stature, she was frail and in poor health in her final years. But she continued her work nevertheless. It was not until March 1997, just months before her death, that she finally stepped down as head of her order. Having started with only 12 members, the missionaries of charity had grown to include more than four. 000 nuns who continued to run orphanages and hospices around the world. Mother Teresa died on September 5th of that year. She was 87. What is the difference between the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament? The Hebrew Bible is made up of 24 books. The Old Testament used by Christians consists of the same books as those of the Hebrew Bible. But they are arranged differently and many books are divided. Resulting in more books in the Old Testament than in the Hebrew Bible. Among Christians, the Old Testament varies between Protestantism and Roman Catholicism. Protestants include 39 books in the Old Testament while Roman Catholics add 7 books. Called the Apocrypha, to their version, for a total of 46 books. The books of the Apocrypha resemble those of the Old Testament, but since they were written later than most of the Old Testament, Probably 300 B.CA.D. 70, both Protestants and Jews treat them separately. The Bibles used by all three religions Judaism, Roman Catholicism, and Protestantism begin with the same seven books Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and Judges. The first five of these were written by Moses. Who was Hawaii LOA?
he was a Polynesian chief who sailed some 2,400 miles of open water from the Marquesas Islands. Near Tahiti, to discover the Hawaiian Islands in the A. D 400s. The islands were first discovered by Europeans in 1778 when British navigator Captain James Cook. 1728 to 1779, landed on the island of Kauai and named the islands after John Montague, c. 1718 to 1792, who was the fourth Earl of Sandwich and first Lord of the Admiralty. Captain Cook died there at the hand of the natives in a skirmish over a stolen boat. Will Mother Teresa be sainted? As of the early 2000s Mother Teresa of Calcutta was on the road to sainthood. On October 19, 2003, she was beatified. A key step in the process that began just two years after her death. Her worldwide reputation of holiness prompted Pope John Paul II, 1920-2005, to waive the customary five-year waiting period for the cause of canonization to begin. Mother Teresa's heroic virtues, a requirement for sainthood, were well known long before she died. The modern martyr spent nearly 70 years working as a missionary among the poor. The last 50 of them in outreach to societies most downtrodden the impoverished sick and dying. She lived modestly, dressed simply, usually in a plain white sari, which she felt identified her with the poor. And devoted herself wholly to helping those society had forgotten. The so-called Saint of the Gutter received worldwide recognition for her work. In 1979 she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Though she came into contact with some of the world's most influential people. She was unchanged by the attention. When the Pope gave her a Lincoln Continental for her own personal transportation. She auctioned it off to raise needed funds for her works of charity. Reportedly, when she visited Britain's Princess Diana, 1961-1997, the nun looked on the large rooms in the royal palace and uttered something to the effect of just think how many people could live in these rooms. Another requirement of sainthood is involvement in miracles. In October 2002 it was reported that Pope John Paul's office had attributed a miracle to Mother Teresa. A young Indian woman was cured of a stomach tumor after praying to her. The Vatican, however, found no scientific explanation for the woman's recovery. On December 20, 2002, the Pope approved the decrees of her heroic virtues and miracles. Paving the way for Mother Teresa's beatification in 2003, her sainthood appeared to be imminent. What were the Spanish holdings in the New World? New Spain comprised much of the Spanish possessions in the New World during the colonial period. At its height, New Spain included what are today the southwestern United States. All of Mexico, Central America to the Isthmus of Panama, Florida, much of the West Indies. 
islands in the Caribbean, as well as the Philippines in the Pacific Ocean. The Viceroyalty, province governed by a representative of the monarch, was governed from the capital at Mexico City beginning in 1535. In 1821 a Mexican rebellion ended Spanish rule there, and the colonial empire of New Spain was dissolved. By 1898 Spain had relinquished all its possessions in North America. Its last holdings were the islands of Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines which were ceded to the United States after Spain lost the Spanish-American War, 1898. During the colonial period, Spain also claimed other territories. In the New World in Northern and Western South America. Most of these holdings fell under the Viceroyalty of Peru which was administered separately from the Viceroyalty of New Spain. These possessions were also lost by Spain by the end of the 1800s. Who was the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe? It was English Admiral Sir Francis Drake, 1540 or 1543 to 1596, who set out in 1577 to explore the Strait of Magellan. He did so, investigating the coast of South America, he and his crew plundered coastal Chile and Peru in the process. Before continuing into the South Pacific and heading northward. He eventually reached the coast of present-day California, which he named New Albion. A name that did not stick, and claimed it for Queen Elizabeth I, 1533-1603. He continued sailing northward and is believed to have reached Vancouver still in search of the Northwest Passage. Not finding it, he was much too far south, explorers would later learn, he sailed westward. He reached the so-called Spice Islands. Today known as the Moluccas, in East Indonesia in 1579. Drake also found the Indonesian island of Java. Before continuing west through the Indian Ocean. Rounding the southern tip of South Africa at the Cape of Good Hope and skirting the western coast of Africa northward to Sierra Leone. From there Drake returned home to Plymouth, England. Where he landed in 1580, the first Englishman to travel around the world. He was knighted by the Queen one year later. It is also Drake who along with his fellow countryman Sir Walter Raleigh. 1554-1618, bears the dubious honor of introducing tobacco to his homeland. In 1586 Drake returned from another expedition to North and South America, where he did battle with Spanish fleets for control of lands. He then picked up colonists in Virginia, who carried with them potatoes and the materials and implements for tobacco smoking. Drake remained in the service of the Queen for his whole life, going on to fight and defeat the Spanish Armada in 1588. On a mission to the West Indies in 1596, Drake died on board his own ship. What was the lost colony?
it was the second English colony established in America, set up in 1587 on Roanoke Island. Off the coast of North Carolina, by 1590 it had disappeared without a trace. Theories surround the disappearance, though it is not known for sure what happened. Roanoke Island had also been the site of the first English colony. Set up in 1585 by about 100 men who were sent there by Sir Walter Raleigh, 1554-1618. Raleigh had perceived the island to be a good spot for English warships that were then fighting the Spanish, to be repaired and loaded with new supplies. But the plan was not a success, the land wasn't fertile enough to support. Both the colonists and the Indians living nearby and ships could not get close enough to the island since the surrounding sea proved too shallow. The colonists returned to England the following year. Meantime, Raleigh had dispatched another group of colonists from England. They arrived at Roanoke days after the original settlers left. Seeing that the site had been abandoned, all but 15 of the colonists opted to return to England. In spring 1587 Raleigh sent yet another group of colonists to America. But these ships were headed for areas near Chesapeake Bay, farther north, in present-day Virginia. Reaching the Outer Banks in July, the ship's commander refused to take the colonists to their destination and instead left them at Roanoke Island. The colonists' leader, John White, who had also been among the first settlers at Roanoke, returned to England for supplies in August 1587. However, the ongoing war between England and Spain prevented him from returning to the colony until three years later. Arriving back at Roanoke in August 1590, expecting to be met by family members and the 100 or so settlers, including some women and children. Instead he discovered that the colony was abandoned. The only clue that White found was the word Crotoan, which had been engraved on a tree. The Crotoan or Hatteras, were friendly Indians who lived on an island south of Roanoke Island. White set out to see if the colonists had joined the Hatteras Indians. But weather prevented the search and his expedition returned to England instead. Two theories explain what might have become of the lost colonists. Since the shore of Chesapeake Bay was their original destination, the colonists might have moved there but encountering resistance, perished at the hands of the Indians. Other evidence suggests that the colonists became integrated with several Indian tribes living in North Carolina. Either way, they were never seen again by Europeans. Who was the first European to traverse the Bering Strait? The Bering Strait, which connects the Arctic Ocean and the Bering Sea is 53 miles across at its most narrow point. The first European to traverse it was Danish navigator Vitus Bering, 1681 to 1741, in 1728. The explorer, for whom the strait and the sea were named, had been employed by Tsar Peter the Great. 
1672-1725, of Russia to determine whether Asia and North America are connected. Why was John Paul II called the People's Pope? Because during his 27-year tenure, he dramatically changed the public perception of the Pope. Polish Cardinal Karol Wojtyla, 1920-2005, was named Pope John Paul II on October 16, 1978. Becoming the first non-Italian head of the Roman Catholic Church in 455 years. From the first moments of his service, it was clear that this was a different kind of Pope. Upon his election, he greeted the cardinals of the conclave his brothers standing rather than seated, which was the tradition. A few weeks after his election, he leaned out the windows of the Vatican Palace to sing carols with 50,000 children gathered in St. Peter's Square to celebrate Christmas. Instead of limiting his concerns to the administration of the Church, he traveled far and wide to carry the message of Christianity to the people. Crowds, often numbering in the hundreds of thousands to millions, gathered to see him around the globe. In 1979 he made his first trip to the United States. After which Time magazine ran a cover story with the headline, John Paul, Superstar. Pope John Paul fought for freedom of religion everywhere, even challenging his communist homeland. His call for solidarity contributed to the downfall of communism in Poland and across the Eastern Bloc. He published regularly memoirs as well as books of prayers, lessons, meditations, and poetry. Despite his active ministry on the world stage, he remained a traditionalist. Never wavering from the ages-old teachings of the Catholic Church. When he died on April 2, 2005. He was hailed both as a holy man and a man of peace by Christians and non-Christians alike. Are the adventures of Marco Polo true? Most of the tales are accepted as true and accurate by modern scholars. It is only those accounts that deal with places where it is not known that Marco Polo traveled. Such as Africa that are seen as legend rather than fact. Upon his return to Venice in 1295, Marco Polo, 1254-1324, took up the family occupation and worked as a merchant. Three years later, he was on board a ship that was captured by a rival Genos ship. He was subsequently imprisoned in the port city of Genoa, where he met a writer named Rustic Hello, or Rusticiano, from the Italian city of Pisa. Polo recounted his stories to Rustic Hello, who wrote them down and published them as the Divisament do Monde, Description of the World. The book was an immediate popular success and became one of the most important sources of Western knowledge of the East. Readers today know the stories as the travels of Marco Polo.
Why did Spain authorize Columbus's expedition in search of a westward route to the Indies? When Christopher Columbus, born Cristoforo Colombo, 1451-1506, who was Italian, became convinced that Earth was round. He had been studying the writings of Ptolemy, and that he could, therefore, reach the east by traveling due west across the ocean, he first took the idea to the King of Portugal to seek his financial aid. This was about 1483. The move was a natural one, he had settled in Portugal at the age of 25, married a Portuguese woman. Who bore him one son before she died. And Portugal was the leading seafaring nation of Europe at that time, carrying out southbound voyages with the intent of rounding. Africa and reaching the Indies to the east. But Columbus was rebuffed by the Portuguese monarch. When in 1484 he took his plan to the Spanish monarchs, King Ferdinand. 1452-1516, and Queen Isabella, 1451-1504, they too refused to back him. But Columbus persisted, and in 1492 the Spanish king and queen agreed to sponsor the explorer's plan. There were two reasons for the decision, the overland trade route to the Indies. India and its adjacent lands and islands in the Far East, had long been cut off by the Turks. And the Western Europeans found themselves in need of finding a new trade route to the Far East. Further, Ferdinand and Isabella were devout Christians. As was Columbus, and they all shared a desire to advance the Christian religion. In short, the monarchs saw that there were both material and religious advantages for backing Columbus's expedition. Who was the first to go around the world? YC, the first to circumnavigate the globe was the Basque navigator Juan Sebastián de Elcano, c. 1476-1526, though 18 sailors who made the trip with him also claim the distinction. The trip was completed in 1522 and had taken nearly three years. In 1519, Elcano had set out with Ferdinand Magellan, c. 1480-1521, on a Spanish-sponsored expedition that became the first one successful in finding a western route to the east, having rounded the southernmost point of mainland South America. In 1520, and entering into the South Pacific, the expedition reached the Philippines in 1521, when Magellan was killed there. It was Elcano who took leadership of the crew and guided the expedition westward. Returning to Spain as the first sea captain to go around the world. What was the Great Awakening? The Great Awakening was an American religious movement that began in New England in the mid-1730s. At its center were the fire and brimstone sermons delivered by charismatic preachers such as Congregational Minister Jonathan Edwards, 1703 to 1758 and Anglican missionary George Whitefield 1714 to 1770 
Revivals were another cornerstone of the movement, these were evangelistic meetings that moved around the countryside. From Maine to Georgia, converting, or awakening. People to Christianity not through the doctrines of the church, but rather through the individual's own experience. The theology of the Great Awakening was Calvinist, stressing the depravity of man and the sovereignty of God and promoting the belief that faith, and not conduct, is the road to salvation. In its emphasis on the individual and its espousal that the individual is the final arbiter of truth, the movement had a profound effect on the spiritual and political character of what would soon become the United States. Since many vehemently opposed the movement, it also served to divide churches between the revivalists and the traditionalists. Thus, it diversified American religious life and promoted religious tolerance. What are the Ten Commandments? Also called the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments appear in the Bible in the book of Exodus. 20,2-17, and in the book of Deuteronomy, 5,6-21. They are considered the summary of divine law as handed down by God to Moses. Who not only heard them but received them in the form of writing on two stone tablets as he stood atop Mount Sinai, what is known today as Gebel Musa. On Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, where he had been summoned by God. According to the Bible, the commandments, which are paramount in the ethical systems of Judaism and Christianity. Are these, 1, do not have any other god besides the Lord God, 2, do not have or worship idols. Carved images, 3, do not make wrong use of the name of the Lord your God, or do not take the name of the Lord in vain, 4, Keep the Sabbath day holy. 5. Honor your mother and your father. 6. Do not commit murder. 7. Do not commit adultery. 8. Do not steal. 9. Do not give false evidence against your neighbor. And 10. Do not covet your neighbor's household or lust after your neighbor's spouse. What were the French holdings in the New World? The French possessions in North America, called New France, consisted of the colonies of Canada, Acadia, and Louisiana. The first land claims were made in 1534 by French explorer Jacques Cartier. 1491-1557, as he sailed the St. Lawrence River in eastern Canada. In 1604 Sieur de Mons, Pierre Duguay, C1568-C1630, C. established a settlement at Acadia. In present-day Nova Scotia, Canada, and French claims later extended the region to include what are today the province of New Brunswick and the eastern part of the state of Maine. After founding Quebec in 1608, explorer Samuel de Champlain, c. 1567-1637, to penetrated the interior, present-day Ontario, as far as Georgian Bay on Lake Huron. Extending French land claims westward. 
in 1672 French-Canadian explorer Louis Joliet. 1645-1700, and French missionary Jacques Marquette, 1637-1675. Became the first Europeans to discover the upper part of the Mississippi River. Ten years later, French explorer Sieur de La Salle, 1643-1687, followed the Mississippi to the Gulf of Mexico. Claiming the river valley for France and naming it Louisiana. While the French expanded their North American claims, the majority of French settlers lived in Canada. France lost Canada to Great Britain in the Seven Years' War, 1756 63. Louisiana changed hands numerous times before it was finally sold to the United States in. 1803 As part of the Louisiana Purchase, it was France's last claim on the North American mainland. French culture and influence in these areas remains prevalent today. In 1635 the French also claimed the West Indies islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe. And its small surrounding islands, including Saint Barthélemy. In 1946 the French government changed the status of these islands from colonies to overseas departments. What are the Dead Sea Scrolls? The scrolls are ancient manuscripts of great historical and religious importance. They were found in dry riverbed caves on the northwestern side of the Dead Sea. A salt lake situated between Israel, the West Bank, and Jordan. More than 800 scrolls have been found. With the most famous discoveries made in 1947, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found miles apart at a number of different sites, including Kerbet Qumran in the West Bank, formerly Israel. The texts date to different centuries but include fragments of every book of the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament, except the Book of Esther. Some texts are almost identical to Bible texts used today. Showing that much of the Old Testament is the same as it was 2000 years ago. What is Zen? Also called Zen Buddhism, it is a sect of Buddhism practiced predominantly in Japan and China. The religion is based on meditation rather than on the strict moral doctrine of Buddhism. It was founded in China in the 5th century AD by Bodhidharma, an Indian Buddhist monk and missionary. He taught that sudden enlightenment can be achieved through the practice of meditation, or wall gazing. The religion defines enlightenment as the direct seeing of one's original nature. Were the Vikings the first Europeans to reach North America? It is believed that the seafaring Norsemen, who are alternately called the Vikings, were in fact the first Europeans to see the Western Hemisphere, North and South America and the surrounding waters. Norwegian-born Leif Erikson, C970 C1020.
is generally credited with having been the first European to set foot on North American soil. Ericsson was the son of navigator Eric the Red, who founded a Norse settlement in Greenland and moved his family there in 985 or 986. About that same time another Norseman, Bjarni Herjolfsson, who was driven off course on his way from Iceland to Greenland, became the first European to sight North America, but he did not go ashore. It is believed that Ericsson decided he would follow up on Herjolfsson's discovery. About 1001 Ericsson set out from Greenland with a crew of 35 men and probably landed on the southern end of Baffin Island, due north of the province of Quebec. The expedition likely made it to Labrador, Newfoundland, on the northeastern North American mainland, and later landed on the coast of what is today Nova Scotia or Newfoundland. Canada, this landfall may have been at Lance Auxiliary Meadows, on Newfoundland Island. Ericsson and his crew spent the winter of 1001-02 at a place he called Vinland. Which was described as well wooded and produced fruit, especially grapes. He returned to Greenland in the spring of 1002. The first authenticated European. Landing in North America was in 1500 when Portuguese navigator Gaspar de Corte Real. C1450 C1501, explored the coast of Labrador and Newfoundland. A year later, he made a second trip to North America but never returned home. In 1502 his brother Miguel went out in search of him, neither returned. How long was it before someone reached the east by sailing west? It was not until 1520 that a route was found. Portuguese navigator Ferdinand Magellan, c. 1480-1521 was on an expedition for Spain when he found a southwest passage which took him around the southern tip of South America through a winding waterway that still bears his name the Strait of Magellan having set out from Spain in September 1519 it was a full year later before Magellan born for Neo de Magalhães and known in Spain as Fernando de Magallanes reached this point. South of the South American mainland and north of the Tierra del Fuego island chain, today these islands are part of Argentina and Chile. And this was only after he had crushed a mutiny. Nevertheless, Magellan had found a connection between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. He sailed on from there, reaching the island we know as Guam on March 6, 1521. Ten days later, he discovered the Philippines. On the Philippine island of Cebu, he made an alliance with a treacherous native sovereign for whom he undertook an expedition to the nearby island of Macton. It was there that Magellan met with his death in April 1521. His expedition continued without him. Under the direction of Juan Sebastián de Elcano, c. 1476-1526, who in 1522 returned to Seville, Spain. Along with 18 other survivors of the Magellan expedition. Their cargo, aboard the ship Vittoria. 
included valuable spices which more than paid for the expense of the expedition. Is it true that Moses stuttered? Yes, the Bible indicates that Moses had a speech impairment. Which caused him to fear the mission that God gave him. In the book of Exodus, 4.10, just after Moses has been called by God and told to go to the Pharaoh and lead the Israelites out of Egypt. He appeals to the Lord, saying, If you please, Lord. I have never been eloquent. I am slow of speech and tongue, and, later, 4.13, If you please, Lord, send someone else. God reassures Moses and instructs him to go meet his brother. Aaron the Levite, who is eloquent and will speak to the people for Moses. What became of John Cabot's son, Sebastian? Sebastian, c. 1476-1557, who was born in Bristol, England, and sailed with his father on his successful expedition to North America the summer of 1497. Did not take part in his father's ill-fated venture the following year. Had he done so, the world would have lost another great adventurer. Since that expedition was never heard from again. Instead, Sebastian stayed behind and pursued his father's cause and that of other merchant navigators. Who were determined to find overseas trade routes to the east. During his lifetime. Sebastian Cabot drew up maps for both the English and Spanish royalty and from 1525 to 1528 led a Spanish expedition that reached South America's Rio de la Plata and sailed into the Parana and Paraguay rivers. In 1544 Cabot published an engraved map of the world and seven years later under a pension from King Edward VI. 1537 to 1553, he founded the Merchant Adventurers of London. This group sponsored expeditions seeking a northeast passage around Europe to establish a trading route to the east. In so doing, the group affected trade with Russia. What are the divisions of the Hebrew Bible? The Hebrew Bible is divided into three main sections called the Law, or Torah, the Prophets, and the Writings, or Hagiographa. The Hebrew Bible is accepted by Jews as sacred. The word testament comes from the ancient word testamentum, meaning covenant with God. Much of the Hebrew Bible recounts Jewish history. Demonstrating faithful observance to their agreement with God. The law consists of those five books written by Moses, and these recount creation, early traditions. The lives of the patriarchs of Israel, early events of the Israelites, and entrance into the promised land. Torah translates as teaching, and Jews, as do Christians. Look to these first five books of the Bible for guidance.
the prophets consists of the books of the former prophets, books of Joshua. Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, and 1st and 2nd Kings, and the latter prophets. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the twelve the teachings of twelve other prophets. The books of the prophets chronicle historical events. But according to the Jewish tradition these books also teach that people must obey God's laws. The writings consist of thirteen books, which are believed to have been written by poets and teachers.